This is Chuck Schaefer, and I'm joined by Raghu Raghavan, founder and CEO of Act On Software. Raghu, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Chuck. Happy to be here. What advice would you offer the business, sales, or marketing leader that's about to go into a marketing automation software selection project? Ah, uh, that's, you know, I would say that be very realistic about what you expect to get out of it and make sure that you don't do anything with marketing automation without involving your salespeople and seeing the benefits they get. I, I, and I really believe that sales and marketing alignment is like a subtext to this whole thing. Sure. Right? If marketing automation is to succeed, the salespeople have to see the value. And in some ways, they have to guide how the marketing automation system works. And I would say that historically, this space has had a lot of, you know, people have marketed ahead of where the, their functionality is in this space. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the marketing message is often much richer than what the actual platform is. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we would tell people is, don't get locked in, make sure you have all your options when you look at it, because the reality may not match what your expectation was. And so make sure that you have the wherewithal to not get locked into something you don't want and that you're complaining about that you're not getting the benefit of. And I would say be realistic about what you need to do with your team to be successful with this. Now I will, I will raise Eloqua as a, as a good example. I think Eloqua is a fantastic system. But if you're going to be successful with Eloqua, you need to make the commitment to succeed with it. You see, you need to have the team, the resources, the effort that you put in to actually have a successful implementation. And if that's what you want, it's a grand, it's a fantastic system. If you look at a lot of the customers that we have, they need to be up and running now, not third, not nine months from now, but now, because you know we also do these. You know, we have a month-to-month -month contract; people can cancel anytime they want. Mm -hmm. So if they're not happy within 30 days, I don't have a customer. And in fact, I have to keep earning their business every month. So we, we take a different approach to this, but we would really tell a customer, if you're gonna get a marketing automation system, be very clear about what you expect the vendor to do. Be very clear about what your organization needs to, to have in order to succeed with it. And, and there's a spectrum, obviously, mm -hmm. of, how pe of what people are looking to do. And we think we fit very well in a big chunk of that spectrum but I think there's a place for an Eloqua and all the other companies that are out there to actually stake out their, their territory and succeed. Let me ask you a little bit about deployment. Mm -hmm. All technology implementations involve risk. Yes. What are the common risks for the deployment of marketing automation technology and how do you recommend that organizations mitigate those risks? So I think the, <clears throat> the biggest risk that I've seen really is the setting up of the marketing database. You know, many of the systems that start off, you know, you end up having to set up a marketing database that has to sync to a sales, you know, to the master database, which is often in salesforce.com, most often. Mm -hmm. But it, I mean, it could be any of the other systems out there as well. To get that to work successfully is a pretty tricky matter because if you imagine, you know, there's one little mistake in the implementation and something happens on the marketing side, it goes back and resets all the scores on the sales side. And, you know, salespeople have leads come and go, and you know their their workday gets ruined, and I mean, it can cause chaos. Sure. Because it's it's two giant systems exchanging information at lightning speed, and one mistake, and you're done. So I think that any system where you're trying to sync databases together, you have to look at with some care and, and look at the risk involved. Okay. Now we took a kind of a contrarian approach to that. We said, let's not make that the first thing that people look to do. Let's actually try to have them identify the pieces of the mark sales database they need to work with instead of saying, let's get the whole thing synced. Right. When you sell departmentally like we do, the department only has an access to a tiny piece of the full database of the company. So by definition, we only had to work with you know, that subset of the master database that they were working with. Mm -hmm. So it was almost forced on the segment we went into. We also took the approach that you, you the marketing department shouldn't be in the business of figuring out database schemas because if you get it wrong, everything goes wrong, right? Right. And and we thought let the let the system figure out. Hmm, these are computers; they're getting smarter. Right. You can talk to your phone and you can figure out what you're saying. So why can't the system figure out what you're trying to do? Let it build the schema. Let it optimize. Let it be very thoughtful in how it synchronizes the data back to your salespeople, right? If you change your mind and change your scoring criteria. So, you know, th there are no best practices for all of this stuff, as you know. Mm -hmm. What is a good 
qualification score for one company may be completely wrong for another company. So people sit there and say, well, if he came to my pricing page, let's give him 20 points. And the next week, the sales guy says, no, that's important. Okay, let's give him 50 points. Well, if you keep changing stuff like that, if you're not careful, you know, the recomputation and the recalibration of your database and the qualification can kill you. Acton has recently <coughs> secured a Series D venture round for mm -hmm. about $16 million. Mm -hmm. Can you share with me what you may do with the, the use of proceeds or what yes. we may expect to see from Acton? Absolutely. I think, uh, well, first of all, I should say that this was a round that uh, we, didn't, we didn't need it in the sense we were not about to run out of money. We had plenty of money in the bank. But what we saw was a market that, the marketing, this market is evolving quickly, yes. as you know. It's not just the social piece, but it's all the, the adjacent pieces, all the adjacent technologies are starting to merge mm -hmm. into one, into unified platforms. And so we saw this market starting to, uh, you know, starting to consolidate in certain ways, right? We saw that a lot of the social companies that were funded, the early social companies, and some of them got acquired for, for very nice outcomes for those companies. But there's a lot of other companies out there that have built some pretty cool social technology and they're saying, well, what do we do with this thing? It's just this thing, right? So we see companies with interesting technology and we want to scoop them up because we can make them part of our bigger story. Sure. Uh, we also see adjacent spaces where we want to play. Now, that means more engineers, more, you know, more development horsepower on our side. So we want to do that. We've uh, historically spent very little on marketing, as you are probably aware since you're in the industry, right? <laughs> sure. And that's something we want to change. You know, we've finally started to build a good marketing team, a good PR team, and we want to spend money to get the word out because I think now we are a real presence in this market and mm -hmm. we want the world to know. Uh, and finally, we want to grow internationally. About, you know, almost 10% of our revenue is coming from an international, uh, from international, and we don't even have a real international operation. It's just. Mm -hmm by, you know, it's almost by accident, if you will, that our sales people in California have started to close business in Europe and Australia and other places. So now we want to make more of a push. Very good. Raghu, if we look forward a couple years, mm -hmm. how do you expect that this marketing automation technology industry will evolve or will change? You know, I would think that it might be that the word marketing automation is not used anymore. You know, it may be that it's run its course. And I think it's more of an integrated platform for engagement. And I think that, you know, when you looked at Marketo and Eloqua, they started talking about revenue performance management because they took the, the benefits of what marketing automation is. And they changed the language in a way that the CEO or the CFO could see the value of this whole technology, mm -hmm. revenue and revenue performance. I think at the mid-market level, I think a single platform that allows you to engage with customers for much longer, you know, when there were suspects and then prospects and then actual, you know, opportunities and then customers and, you know, that whole spectrum. I think that whole spectrum needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. The end-to-end, -end, you know, uh, life cycle of a customer from before they were to after they became customers and the whole thing. And I think you'll start to see companies address that whole spectrum with, with more focus and, and more of a concerted effort. Now, they might end up selling to different people. They might end up selling to the CMO. And the, and the chief revenue officer, as well as the customer success ma you know, managers. That could happen. But yet, the customer needs to have an integrated view of how the company talks to them. Right, so I think you'll start to see much more of that. And, and you know for sure that a lot more of the content is going to be consumed on mobile devices, you know that. So I think the consumption of content is starting to become dynamic. And so I think companies that uh, are just not able to take into account you know, the whole range of, of, of content consumption platforms are going to get left behind. So it's going to be this constant race. To, I, I, I don't think it's a very dynamic industry. I think it will go even faster. And I think the, the leaders will, will evolve that much faster. And I think that's what's going to happen. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of niche point solutions, which is how, mm -hmm. as you know, marketing automation was for a long time. Sure. A lot of little guys. Well, with that comment, I think we're at a good break point for our conversation. We are. This is Chuck Schaefer. I've been joined by Ragu Raghavan, CEO of Acton Software. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Chuck.